A while ago I made a tutorial on how to let objects move over a spline in Unreal, and the most common question I'm getting on that video is, that's all fine and good, but how do I do this with multiple objects on the same spline? And today we're going to remake this system, but make it compatible with multiple objects. This project file is also available on my Patreon if you just all want to grab the assets and use it, or play around with the finished version. Of it. Uh, otherwise, you can always just follow along with this tutorial and you'll be fine as well. So let's get started. We have the example here. We're going to be making a new blueprint class, which will be a actor, and we'll call that a blueprint spline mover, something along those lines. So we're going to add, obviously, a spline component to that, because that's the main thing that we're going to be working with here. And then we can go over into the event graph and get rid of event tick and actor overlap, because we're not going to be using those. Instead, we're going to make a custom event, call that something like play timeline. And that is going to, you guessed it, add a timeline. And we're going to disconnect it from play and only ever play from start. Opening up that timeline, we can add some tracks. We're going to add a float track and we'll call that alpha. Adding two keys, one at coordinate 0, 0. And then we're going to add another key at coordinate 1, 1. We'll set the length of this timeline to 1 as well. Or alternatively, you could use last keyframe for the length of your timeline. I like to do both just to be safe. So now this timeline is going to have this alpha value animate from 0 to 1 over a time period of 1 second. We actually don't want it to always be 1 second, so before we move on with the actual system, uh, let's make something that lets us influence how long this timeline takes. For that, we're going to make a new variable here, and we'll call this timeline length, and it will be a float variable, and we'll set that to public, so that we can actually change it around in the viewport editor. Now that we have that, we can drag in our timeline, the component we made when we created this node, and we can set its play rate, and its play rate is going to be set by this timeline length variable, but not directly. What we're going to do instead is we're going to add a division node, where the timeline length goes into the bottom, and the top value will be 1. So it'll be 1 divided by our timeline length. That's going to go into the set play rate, and now, whatever number we put into the timeline length here, which the default value will just set to 5, will be the amount of seconds that the timeline will be long. So we can connect that up to begin play, and after that we can run our play timeline custom event. And that's everything we need to do with begin play, so we can put that to the side. Now, going back to our timeline here, coming off this alpha, we're going to put that into a loop. We don't want it to put into the A component though, we want it to go into the alpha. That A value we're going to leave alone, that's going to be 0. The B value is going to be our spline, and then we're going to get the spline length off of that. And that will go into the B. So now this timeline animates between 0 and however long our spline might be. But what can we even do with that information? Well. Now we're going to be adding our actors. So let's add a new variable, call it actors, and we can set this to the type actor. And down here, we can choose for the actor objects reference. Also setting that to being public. This is where we diverge from the last tutorial that I've made. And over here at the right hand side of the screen, instead of just having a single variable, we can choose an array meaning that this variable now can hold multiple actors inside of it. And that's what we're going to be taking advantage of. So what we do is we drag in this actors array. And when dragging of an array, we can plug it into a for each loop. This is a loop that executes a certain piece of code for every single index that this array has. So of course, what we'll want to do is we'll want to set actor location and rotation for all of these and the actor that we're going to be setting is the array element now we need the location and the rotation though and that's what we have this loop for so the output from this loop we're going to add a offset to and that offset is going to be a variable so offset between actors and instead of an actor array we're going to just make this a single float 
variable. And the way we'll calculate that offset, uh, by default, let's set it to a value of 100. We'll multiply our array index here, so we can multiply it with that offset. And as such, we'll get for the first actor, which will be index number zero, we'll get 100 or whatever we might want the offset to be times zero, which is zero. Then for the next actor in the array, which will be index number one, is 100 times one. So it will be offset on the spline by 100 units. Then for the next actor, it will be index two, it will be offset 200, and so on and so forth. And here we're going to make a variable as well. Uh, it's not entirely necessary to do this, just for organizational purposes, this is nice. So we'll make a float distance along spline, and we'll simply set that value here so that we have our distance along spline with the offset added to it available as a variable because now we're going to have to check whether or not this actually returns a number that's still on the spline since we are looping from zero to the end of the spline and then adding something to it at some point some of the actors are going to have a value assigned to them that's not actually on the spline and that's going to cause glitches and weirdness so we need to compensate for that and the way we do that is we add in a branch node by holding down b and left clicking and we'll make a condition here and that is if this distance along spline is greater than and then we can get a reference to our spline again and get spline length so if our distance along spline is greater than the spline length is to begin with we need to do something otherwise we can just set the actor location and rotation and of course we need to hook up the branch node itself now if this is true we need to set our distance along spline to being a new value and then also go into the set actor location and rotation and the value that we need to put into it is just its original value. So let's get a reference to it again. And from that, we will subtract the spline length. That way it will loop back around to being properly on the spline always. Now we get a reference to our spline here again, and we'll get the location at distance along spline. And we'll also get the rotation at a distance along the spline. We'll set both of those coordinate spaces to world space instead of local space. And then we can use our distance along spline variable that we've made here to plug into both of these. And then we can use those pins to match up with the corresponding colors on our set actor location and rotation. And with that, we more or less have a functioning system but we still need to hook up our timeline. So we hook up the update pin into the for each loop. And then when the timeline is finished, we want to restart the timeline. So we can simply do that with uh, running the play timeline custom event that we've made. Now, this is entirely functional, but in order to make things a little bit easier to work with in the viewport editor, we're also going to add a construction script. Don't worry, this is very, very easy because it pretty much does the exact same thing that we just did, but it just does it for in the editor. So we'll get a reference to our actors here, and we'll put in a for each loop, and we can actually copy over quite a bit from what's happened here. So we can get the location and rotation at a distance along the spline, and the set actor location and rotation, copy that over into this script over here, and then the distance here, we don't have to worry about any timelines and stuff because this doesn't animate, right? This is just in the construction for the viewport itself. So we can simply set the offset between actors, multiply it with the array index, and put that into both of those distances. Hook up the array element into the set actor location and rotation node. And that's all there is to it for the construction script. This is just to make it a little bit more design friendly. Nothing more, nothing less. So now if we go back into the viewport and we put our spline mover in here, we can, by holding Alt 
while moving around these points. It'll create some new points for us. And if you want these to loop, a little neat hack I have for you is clicking on the spline component here. We can actually select this closed loop checkbox, which will automatically just make this a closed loop for you. So we have a bit of a loop here. And now if we select the top thing here, the BP spline mover, we have the timeline length, we have the actors. So let's add three actors here and let's make that those three blocks over there. And as you can see, they're a little too close together probably. And that is because we forgot to set the offset between actors to being public. So if we do that and compile, we now have the offset between actors value here and we can increase that a little bit. Now, if we play the game, this is the example that I made before this video. And this is the version that we've made in this video itself. So once again, if you want this project file to play around with and get a much better organized version of this blueprint with uh, comments and stuff like that all made for you. So that's this one over here. Don't mind my mouse cursor being a little weird. There's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download this project file with this blueprint in it so that you can leisurely look through it or maybe just use it if you don't want to recreate it. This has been a very common request for me to do, so I hope this has been helpful. And next time, I'm sure we'll do something fun as well. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.